This amateur radio roundtable is brought to you in part by ICOM America. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Amateur Radio Roundtable. Today is Tuesday, June 5th, and I'd like to welcome everyone who's here watching live on YouTube or on W5KUB.com. Hanging out here in the chat room tonight, we've got, looks like about 100 people hanging out here this evening, so we really appreciate you guys joining us. For those of you that might be new, welcome, and we hope you have a good time with us this evening. We always have fun here on the Amateur Radio Roundtable. Um, if you've noticed, if you're in the chat room, make sure if you're new and you sign in as a guest, you can change your nicknames and put your call sign in there so you can say hello to everybody. We have some great conversations during the show. Also, we have a Facebook group. We'd love to have you join us. Us and about 6,700 other people are very active in there and uh, doing lots of conversations about their projects, getting on the air and talking to each other and much more. So we hope you'll join us. And the link is just above. Also, we have uh, some folks with us tonight. We've got Dave and Joe's with us. Emmett will be on later. And, of course, we're being simulcast on the world-famous WBCQ 5130 kilohertz up in Monticello, Maine. With that, I'd like to say again, welcome, everybody. And I'm going to pass it over to the boss. Take it away, Tom. Hey, thank you, Katie. Wow. Uh, thanks for the introduction and everything. And, you know, things are starting to run up smooth again. You know, the, the week after a hamvention, Kind of like we forgot how to work everything and right. oh, all the buttons were <laughs> wrong place. But hey, we're getting better again. Thanks so much. Hey, just a couple quick announcements to uh, make here real quick. You know, last week we uh, helped uh, Faith Hannah, AE4FH, uh, in her GoFundMe uh, endeavor to uh, uh, try to get some funding to go to Africa. Uh, she's been selected to go to Africa and represent the U.S. in the Youngsters on the Air. So uh, I think last week, uh, within 24 hours, I think they surpassed their goal. But it never hurts to have a little bit more cash in there on a trip like that when you go to Africa, believe me. Uh, oh, yeah. So, um, hey, check out uh, uh, the GoFundMe page. Uh, I think if you just go to GoFundMe, you can uh, uh, type in AE4FH, uh, and it'll probably take you to that page. and. And uh, you can still help her if you if you can here. Hey, all the prizes have been notified. All the prize donors and prize winners, everybody's been notified. Uh, and I know a lot of prizes are starting to be received already. There's some people that are very quick out there. Uh, hey, tell us in the chat room if you won a prize uh, during our Hamvention webcast. Uh, tell us who you are in the chat room and what you won. How you like your prize? You know, we'd love to. Uh, Love to hear from you about that. Also, we're going to do something. We're going to start something new, hopefully, by next Tuesday. We're going to start up a uh, amateur radio roundtable net. Um, Kevin Young, uh, KC7 uh, FPF, who also calls the net for Ham Nation and some other nets, uh, is going to be joining us to uh, uh, help us uh, get a net going. And I think uh, we'll probably televise that net, you know, pre show. Uh, we'll uh, we'll put the video on the old S meter and the radio, and you guys can hear yourself and you can see yourself on the S meter. Anyway, that'd just be fun to do. We'll probably do that maybe six to seven p.m. Central on Tuesdays. I'm thinking. Uh, I'll try to jump in here and check in, but um, uh, and then after seven o'clock, it gets quite busy here for me. So um, we're going to try and see how how it how it works out there. Um, so hey, back to uh, back to uh, Katie and our guest there. Uh, Katie, uh, who you say is with us tonight? And I'll try to bring them in the show here. Well, let's see. We have the YouTube star, Mr. Dave Kassler, K E zero O G, and there he is. There he is from just below me in Colorado, and then the world famous Joe Eisenberg, K zero N E B in Nebraska, Mr. Cornhusker himself. There he is. <laughs> You're looking good with those hips. That's a Heil headset, isn't it? Yes, it is. I've got one just like it. All right, very good. Hey, we want to talk about something in a minute. You're trying to get ahead of me in winning prizes, and i, well, I got a challenge <laughs> for you coming up Huntsville. Are you going to make it to Huntsville this year? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, I already got my plane tickets. All right, the challenge, so the challenge is on. The challenge is on. <laughs> All right, boy, I tell you. Dave? What have you been up to? Yeah. We, we missed you last week. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. A uh, little medical thing came up suddenly. Um, 
I have been recovering from Dayton, um, putting more videos together, including an Ask Dave video that uh, went up on Friday. And I've got a video ready to come up uh, tomorrow. And uh, finally, finally, have a list on my website of upcoming videos. So look at dcastler.com slash upcoming dash videos or hyphen. Right. I guess it's a hyphen. If you put a dash in there, it won't work. So that's what I've been up to, trying to catch up with myself after Dayton. That was a much bigger trip than I thought it would be. And uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly and was overwhelmed thoroughly. So. That's well, we, right. we ran your video last week and uh, just, you know, uh, just wanted to get your thoughts again. Now, they had, there had been, a, what, 42 years between the, the time you went and, and last and this, this, this time, right? Well, that's true. Um, I went when I was in the Air Force. I was at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base for some training for three weeks. And one weekend, uh, somebody said, hey, you need to run down to... Uh, this place uh, to called the Hara Arena to see this big hamvention. And I got there, and I was quite interested in computers at the time, and I found a booth with a computer that had the Star Trek game on it. And so I, I played Star Trek the whole day. And so that was my Dayton experience, playing Star Trek. So I didn't repeat that mistake. I went to all the booths in the exhibit area this time. Um, I found, well, besides the rain, which was entertaining for a Coloradan who doesn't normally see that much rain, uh, and I imagine it's the same in Wyoming, Katie. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, I did get to see Tom, and I did get to see Katie, and uh, got to meet lots of people. I had these shirts made, and... Uh, wore them at Dayton and uh, it was fun people would come up and say hello say that you know they got their license through my videos and things like that so it was really gratifying uh, very interesting I bought a ticket for my wife too and and basically frog marched her into the place uh, on Saturday so that she could uh, see some of the exhibits and uh, meet some of the people uh, but uh, uh, she went off back to uh, look at art galleries and uh, art museums and things like that. So I don't know why she's not as excited about ham radio as I am, but uh, I guess that's one of the mysteries of men just not understanding women. Well, I don't know what you're going to have to do to get her to get that extra license, you know? Yeah, well, she's got her tech, so yeah. that's good. Well, maybe she'll get more interested, but, you know. Hey, as long as she supports you and lets you uh, put those antennas and stuff out there, that's what counts. Oh, golly, and I've got quite a collection now. Um, Emmett said he was going to send me uh, his version of the cobweb, uh, so I'm going to compare that to the MFJ cobweb in an upcoming video and do a pretty close comparison, I think, including using Whisper and things like that. Uh, and so we're just, uh, I'm just having fun with, lots of things going on um the, in in terms of kits i know we're going to hear about kits here in just a moment and i'm looking forward to that because i know that uh, uh he has a kit that uh, i haven't seen yet and i w i want to go build it uh, i picked up a couple there a kanga kit uh that's a regenerative receiver and the other is a little kit that makes lights blink in sequence What's interesting about that one is that it uses all surface mount devices. So I'm going to use that as kind of an introduction to surface mount devices for a video and we'll see how that goes. Most hams, when you say surface mount device, go running for the exit. And uh, I have a viewer uh, who is determined that I'm going to come to love surface mount devices. And so he sent me the microscope that you need to uh, do the work on that. So <laughs> there, that's uh, what's happening uh, out here in Colorado. So uh, back to you, Tom. Well, that's good. Uh, hey. I think, uh, Emmett, Emmett, did you just join us? Of course I did. Can you hear me now? No, I can hear you now, but we don't see you. Oh, it's better okay. that way. <laughs> he's got a, he's got a, uh, he's got a face for radio. Yeah. 
<laughs> Kitty, Kitty's so mean to me. There he is right there. Oh, man. Hey, I, I see a photo bomb. Who is that back behind back here? Well, that's Colorado. I thought it was. All right, you must be in the uh, you must be in the van there. Yeah, we're setting up to go to Dallas uh, this week. I'm not coming now. All right. Yeah, so you stand to watch the fork. All right. Well, you must have been working hard today and, and just got in. So uh, sorry if you had yes. to rush here. You we, we got a few minutes before we. Uh, we bring you in here and I don't even know what we're going to talk about with you tonight but it's always well, something good right yeah we'll just talk about some simple stuff because I like I said I'm right now I'm prepping MCOM 1 okay and I literally just got in when uh, when you texted me I've been uh, basically we've been building antennas like crazy and then we're uh, uh oh just lost somebody uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think so no, Tom just made I you just the switched uh, the, the, the fee oh okay yeah, and then uh, then we're gonna be uh, well building antennas like crazy, and then I gotta get everything ready for the show too. So, and we're gonna stop and spend some time with a friend of ours who lives in Dallas, and uh, and then come home. All right. Sounds good. I guess the next place we'll see you, you're gonna make it down to Huntsville. I, I oh, suppose. most definitely. Yes. Yeah. And we'll be bringing MCOM one as well. That's a good one. All right, so let's let's. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's get this thing rolling tonight. I think our first segment, rolling, Joe rolling, is going to talk rolling. about some new kits. Hey, Joe, come on in here and uh, tell us what you found. Well, hi, Tom, and uh, good evening from Lincoln, Nebraska. And uh, first off, we'll tell Emmett we'll see you this weekend. And oh, uh, I'm I'm speaking twice on Saturday, and uh, get some people started. Uh, uh, with some ideas on techniques to be successful building kits. And then, of course, I will be at Huntsville as well, and in between them, just primarily local, regional-type ham fests, but uh, uh, definitely plan on being in Huntsville as well. Um, uh, the first one I want to show is a kit that's just coming out now from the Four States QRP group, and this is called the Marania. Okay, and what it is, let me see if I can center that a little better. Okay, that's a little better. Uh, it is a simple uh, couple transistor AM radio, and it's based on the early 1960s designs of two transistor radios uh, that were popular. They called them boys' radios because they were advertised in Boys Life and things like that as a low-cost radio. Uh, they, they used to tax radios on how many transistors they had. And anything two transistors and under was considered a toy. So the Japanese came out with some pretty darn uh, sophisticated two transistor circuits. And this radio is based on those. And uh, it's regenerative uh, with fixed regeneration. And it actually sounds pretty good. Uh, but I'll open it first. Hopefully we're not gonna break the uh, battery wires. But let's see here if you can see the construction of this thing. The oh, case yeah. is yeah. all made out of PC board material. And everything is soldered to pads on the back of the board. Mm -hmm. And everything's pre-marked and everything. And the reason he did that is this is really, really good for a beginning kit builder. Because not only do they not have to poke the leads through a hole, but if you have to desolder it, all you have to do is take the soldering iron, tuck the tip under the wire, and lift it right off the pad. So very, very easy to uh, desolder. Uh, if we look inside the case, you'll see it's held together by little solder pads. And there's uh, some standoffs in there as well. And there's a little thing that holds the 9-volt uh, transistor battery. And let's take a little closer look at some of the... Uh, circuitry in there and you'll you'll see that it is primarily uh, soldered onto these pads making for very 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 easy construction for a first-time kit builder and if you'll notice the length of the loop stick on there it has a really really good antenna uh, you can't see the coils because I wrapped it in masking tape to hold it together so if we just kind of put it back in the box here uh, I'm not going to screw it together but we'll turn it on. So you can hear it works. 
the problem is there's a lot of computer noise here from the uh, please expand its signature two for twenty menu, two full size entrees and a full size. So you can tell it works pretty good. Yeah, sounds um, good. Uh, the case is very strong because it's made out of circuit board material, and uh, it's kind of an attractive little thing. And you can leave it on for hours. It doesn't seem to draw the battery down too much. Now here's another AM radio kit, and this one comes from China, and the the website to get it from. I would say look at Amazon or eBay or something like that and look for the 2P3 kit. And I'll uh, give you a better look at the 2P3 mark there. All you got to do is Google a 2P3 kit or 2P3 radio kit. And this also has a big antenna like that, but this is a super hat circuit instead of a regen. Now in the shadows. And sun shining brightly upon Memorial Stadium and the pine trees. Sounds really field. good. You can hear a local yeah. baseball game on there. Um, Sounds really it's, good. <laughs> yeah, it's really amazing. It has not only good quality sound and an earphone plug and everything, but it's extremely sensitive. In fact, if I'm not in my basement with all the radios and RF and, and computers, if I have that upstairs or outside, I can hear stations on almost every channel on the AM broadcast band. It's really an amazing little kit. And these are about 25 bucks for the 2P3. The Morania, I, I can't remember. I think it's around $30 or so for the Morania kit. And these uh, 2P3s are around $25, $26. And uh, I was just astonished at how good this 2P3 radio kit works and it even comes with a box that you fold up and put together so you have a place to store your radio like mm -hmm. that and put it away and it says 2p3 and and it it uh, uh, has a whole description of of what the radio is on the back of the box that you can store it away in and and I really like it uh, both of these kits are really good low cost simple ways to get somebody introduced to the world of kit building and uh, like I said, the, the uh, Four State Morania kit solders to pads. Now, this is not the only one that Four State has that does that. They have a general coverage uh, HF type uh, shortwave broadcast receiver. It actually, here's the ham bands as well. And it's called the Ozark Patrol. And that one even comes with the wooden block it mounts on. And that one also has the same style of construction where you solder parts to pads, but its pads are even farther apart and and also very well suited for a first-time kit builder. Uh, sometime I'll, I'll put that radio on. I'll dig that out of my pile of kits around here, and we'll do a demonstration of the Ozark Patrol. We'll hook it up to the outside antenna. But like I said, uh, the Morania is the, uh, the latest kit to be introduced by the four state qrp group now to give them a little plug all the profits that come from the sale of kits go to offsetting the expenses of putting on the ozarkon qrp convention which includes a kit build uh, a build-a-thon night uh, where we have uh, everybody building the same kit and people like myself and others help others to uh build their kits and learn techniques and become better kit builders. Um, the the Ozarkon, like I said, is held in Branson and it's a great place to take the family and uh, a fun time. So Tom, there you have it, two neat little AM radio kits. And I've got lots more to show soon. Uh, in a few weeks, we'll have that 20 meter CW synthesized transceiver. And what I'll try and do is I'm gonna try uh, a technique here and patch it into my audio mixer and we'll hear some live 20 meter audio from it, okay? All right, well, Joe, uh, thank you very much, boy. Just some neat kits. And those kits that Joe showed us tonight are really geared toward you know your new your new hams and new people wanting to get into the hobby. Uh, you know, uh, people that don't have any experience at all. Uh, hey, those things are exciting to build. I remember those kits from back in the '60s. Something very similar to those plastic cases and those uh, those uh, two transistor uh, radios. Well, Joe, uh, hey, thanks so much. And when you do get uh, another bunch of kits together, we'll get you back in here and we'll we'll spend more time on it.
Yep, and we'll try and get a way to patch the audio directly in live on the air. Okay, sounds real good. Thanks, thanks, Joe. That's uh, cool. So let me. Uh, uh, I I want to do a shout out again. Dina Green. Dina Green is in our chat room tonight. This is two weeks in a row I've seen Dina. Dina is the lady, uh, the teenager that's trying to start up a ham club in the Dayton area at school with no help, no hams helping her. I think that is just commendable. But uh, we're going to try to, uh, we got a lot of people trying to uh, uh, get in touch and help her. And uh, uh, But uh, it's great. She's at the uh, Miami Valley School there uh in the dayton area so hi hi dina this is a hi, shout dina. out to you and i'm sure you have a friend in here uh i i've got so many people in the chat room i don't know your friend's name but you can shoot it back to me there yeah. uh hey if you're new if you're new to the show i've noticed it looks like we got some new people in here if you're new to the show uh hey let us know in the chat room just to tell us uh, that you're new and your first time or second time or whatever we'd love to uh love to uh, hear from you there um, you know, Tom, I, uh, yeah. after Dina called in last week, I, I shot a quick email off to John Amadeo, from, uh, the, the producer from Last Man yeah. Standing, to let him know that you know the ham radio work had actually done its job, and we had this wonderful young lady on the show that told us that she was getting a, you know, wanted to get a ham club started and get into ham radio, and it was all from kind of learning about watching on Last Man Standing, yep. and yeah. he wrote back right away, he just thought that was the coolest thing ever, so, so we... They know about you in Hollywood. Well, that's Dina. cool. That's cool. And you know, uh, I, I'm hearing that Last Man Standing might come back on TV. It, so let's all hope it is. It's, oh, it it's is. Already, it is. Yeah, okay. it's already uh, it's online, and John said they start filming in August. Okay, so that's, uh, that's we're cool. Working with, uh, we're working with John right now on getting him set back up uh, to have a real live station again. Oh, so, that's cool. Right. Well, a great project. All right, hey, let's uh, let's talk uh, shack pictures. Boy, we got some shack pictures here. We got we more sure shack do. pictures. We got more shack pictures this week than I think we've gotten in any week. So if you don't see your shack picture here tonight, it's just because uh, uh, we ran out of time trying to put them together there, and uh, uh, we'll try to get them on in the next week or two. So Katie, uh, I'll pull up the shack pictures if you hey. think. You can uh, uh, go through them there. So here, I'm going to throw this first one up here. Let's see if you can sink into this one. All right. Yes, that is Deepak Rajan's, correct? I think that's to, right. All right, there we go. I'm just organizing my screen here so I can see everything. Hold on a second. Do, do, do. I'm seeing Dave here. Wait a minute. I'm going to move that piece. All right, Deepak, where are you? Okay, Deepak Rajan is uh, Victor Uniform 3, Oscar Victor Uniform, from India. And he has an ICOM 2300H, also an FT-857D, the TYT-8000D, and the UV-5R. So he's got quite an assortment of X, of uh, rigs there. And it's been fun. We've gotten quite a few people from India that have been watching the show and participating. I think it's because of the UBIX-40. We've got a whole new crowd of people watching. It, it may be, yeah. Pretty cool. So our next one is from Don Morgan, Alpha Bravo 3, Bravo Ocean, and he's got a, a TS-2000 in there. And uh, looks like, actually kind of looks like one of those new Heil mics, but I don't think that, I'm not yeah, quite he, sure, can't quite see. He, uh, he didn't send us, Don did not send us a description of the equipment, and it's, it's real hard to pick out what he's got there. But at least we got him on here. Hey, Dan, yeah, tell us right. next time, tell us what all the equipment is, Dan. Yeah, next time you got... I, Tom, I'm just going to yell at you. Don't put people's pictures in if we don't have information. Yeah, How about that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. In the mood tonight. That's, that's right. I'm cracking the whip here, people. All right. So next is James Boswell from, um, he's down in New Mexico, down in my part of the country. He is Alpha, oh, I'm sorry, Kilo Alpha 5 Sierra India Whiskey. And he's got the 10 Tech Paragon and, of course, Air 2. Those are, look at those. Those are beauties. Very nice. Well, now you know, we're going to move know, on. I, oh, I, was sorry. Gonna, I was going to say the only San Antonio I know, I was there in the Air Force, and that's in Texas. So, you know, this is a geography lesson when I got this picture here. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's actually San Antonio, New Mexico. San Antonio. Oh, okay. I, I got you. Okay. Well. Yeah, I got it mixed For up us too. Southern guys, it's all the same. San Antonio, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. So Ray is next. His uh, Ray Zek is in November 6th, Delta Zulu Kilo. And uh, he's got a few things going on. What This photo is when he was out with the Garlic Valley Amateur Radio Club. They were doing a special event station, the Kilo 2 Bravo Sugar Alpha, the K2 Boy Scouts of America. He was working with a STEM group, and they were demonstrating amateur radio at the Silicon Valley Monterey Bay Council Scoutorama at History Park up in San Jose, California. That was, and I remember seeing some information about this. They had a very successful um, day that day. They were using an FT-991 and the FT-8800. They also had a DX Engineering's hex beam along with a HAM-3 rot- rotor on top uh, of that 100-foot U.S. tower trailer. That thing is a beast. We use those at our grand openings. And they were using 100 watts of solar as well as a homebrew 40... How do you how do you do that? The 40 AH LifePo pack. I'm not sure the proper way to pronounce that. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah. Okay. And then um, and then at his home. And then this is some more shots of. Um, now we're moving over to John in Rotterdam, New York. He is Whiskey Two Delta Fox Charlie, and he's got the Yesu FTM 100DR, and he's using the Diamond V2000 antenna. He also has the lovely Yesu FTDX 3000. That is a beauty of a rig. If you guys have ever seen one of those close up, yeah, Dave's got, got the thumbs up. I yeah, have. those are really nice. You got the high old PR781 and the PL2T boom, just like what I've got here in the shock mount. He's also using the SDR RSP2 with a pan adapter on that Flex DX 3000. And uh, that's a pretty cool way to be able to run that. We did a. Uh, a sample of that at our Denver store event um, when uh, Steve from SGR Play was there and he showed how to set up with that as a pan adapter. It's pretty cool what you can do with that thing. Um, he's also got Yesu rotor and 19 feet of Roan 25 tower and all kinds of different stuff going on outside. So he's got quite a nice setup sh- going on in there. He's also got um, um, he's got some band pass going on so that okay. he can. Uh, Helps Let's out see. with the amped and tuner, kind of like what we've got uh, going on here, too. Things mixed up. Oh, that yeah. That, there, that, 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 that doesn't go. Okay, but that's his antenna right there. Yeah. yeah. We all love those shots, that's for sure. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see if we're Kevin back, let's see if we're back in sync here. Yep. There we go. On to Kevin Miller. He is November 9, Whiskey Keel Uniform. He's got a portable station going on there with a Yeast to. The FT8-8800 and the ICOM 706 Mark IIG, um, and he's using the Rig Blaster and Jetstream Switch Mode Supply, as well as the LDG Z100 Tuner and the Jetstream SWR Meter. So he's got a nice little setup. He's ready to rock and roll on the road. Well, he must like putting him in those go boxes there because here's another one. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, that is pretty handy. And it looks like his friend helped him put it together. Yeah, he built that for his friend, uh, KB9 AVO there. This is, again, Ken Miller. Nice. Nice job. Yeah. That's a pretty nice, pretty nice of Kevin to do that for his friend. Oh, yeah. So that one, he said, was a four-unit rack mount case with an Elecraft K2, the Yesu FT8-8900. He's also using the rig blasters and MFJ switch mode supply in there. So now, moving along to Kentucky with... Kilo Yankee for Golf Papa Delta. Matt, he's got the Kenwood 281 Alpha with, and he's using a Radio Shack 19.8 volt power supply. Nice and clean there. I think he cleaned up his shack for the photo op again. <laughs> so now we're going to move on to John's photo, and he is Kilo Echo 8 Uniform Bravo over in Troy, Michigan. And I think we've seen his shack before. Yeah, you know, I think John has sent this in before. Yeah, that's right. Well, showing it off again because he's got a nice-looking shack. He's got the FT-5000, the AL-1500, ICOM 7100, and the KPA 500. So he's got a beautiful setup there. Oh, yeah. And the, the ham map, the ARRL map. So now moving back up to the great northwest of Portland, Oregon, with George Macris, Kilo India 7, Juliet Fox Echo. And he has, um, let's see, he's got the Yesu FT-1000D, um, and he's using a contr- computer-controlled temperature disconnect um, to keep everything moving along in the shack, he says. He's also got a Cushcraft R9, 
And uh, this next photo is his antenna, so that looks pretty nice. I guess that's the R9 right there. Yeah. Yep. Now, I don't now know, we're, I don't know where we got this one, one right here. I know. I don't know where I, we should even show this one, but this is obviously the cleaner part of Joe's shack, K0NEB. <laughs> so where, where is that shack in, in that part of the shack? Is that behind you somewhere? Yeah, it's directly behind me. Oh, all right. <laughs> Well, Joe's got his ICOM 7600 in that new seven, the new ICOM 7300 that he just won at Hamvention. And he's, you said you made how many contacts last weekend on it? Uh, over 200 contacts on six meters FT8, including Brazil. Very nice. That's a nice, and we played with that radio with, uh, with Emmett was out here for field day. So I know lots of people really enjoy it. what antenna you were using, Joe. Uh, a three-element beam uh, on six meters, but okay. on 40 meters, I'm using one of Emmett's uh, um, double bazookas on oh, yeah. 40 meters, and it really, really works well. Uh, very broad-banded and uh, great pattern on it, so I, I highly recommend the double bazooka. Yeah, that's what we've got, too. So then Joe also, as you know, is using his Heil microphones and headsets, and he also has two Begali keys in that shack. So, not too shabby. So, you know, Joe's not just building kits. He's actually getting on the air and having and fun. You know, doing all kinds uh, of Joe, things. I'm, I'm going to do one up on you here. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Emmett to make me a triple bazooka antenna. <laughs> Is there such a thing, Emmett? <laughs> I've had so many people ask me that question. No. <laughs> well, we're going to make one. We'll, we'll make one. But I'll tell you what, uh, the double bazooka works well. The only problem I had was a little RF in the shack, and we, we remedied that with a uh, common mode choke, uh, which is, which is a, uh, a common issue when you're dealing with a, a loop-type antenna like that, like a folded dipole or, or something like this. Every once in a while, you get some RF in there, and the, the choke took it out right away, and it works wonderful. Tell them what happened when you put coax in the dirty choke. Well, I, I did a dirty choke, which is about nine or ten turns of RG8X in the line, and it, it instantly got rid of the RF, but the SWR went up. And because it it uh, obviously was not at the feed point, number one, and number two, uh, those kind of chokes are resonant, while the ferrite-type chokes are not. And so... Uh, the, the dirty choke is okay next to a beam or something like that, but uh, not okay with this kind of antenna because it'll actually affect it. All right, cool. Look at that. We're learning stuff in the middle of Shaq and, photos. And I, yeah. was learning that from, and I learned that from Emmett. Yeah, we'll have to talk antennas. That's another subject. You're messing the automated system up here. That's right. <laughs> I heard I heard I heard the queen complain, so we better yeah. start moving. All right. Now we're moving on to our friend tennis, Ron. Uh, yeah, K9 ID. Of course, Ron is gold medal ideas and makes those fantastic hats that Tom likes to wear and gave away a couple for Hamvention. He is using his Icom 735 that he won in Dayton in 1987, which is the same year I graduated high school. And <laughs> I just had to throw that one in. Sorry, Ron. And uh, he's got the West Mountain Radio External DSP and Ultra Pico Gear, a Brown Brothers BTLA paddle. I'm not sure what that one is. And then he's using a $20 SDR dongle um, taped up to the ICOM's first IF as a pan adapter. Yeah. So he's he's quite creative as well. Yeah, he Pretty is. Cool, Ron. Cool. And uh, Ron, I think Ron's in here, or he's usually in here every night. And actually, I've been talking to Ron on 40 meters almost every afternoon. Oh, nice. Okay, Roy and zero, oh, excuse me, N8, wait, Roy, I thought you were N8ROW. Well, um, that may be a typo on my part. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. I think Roy is November 8th. Yeah, Radio. Oh, I got to. Yeah, oh, Roy. Sorry. Roy is an eight. Roy is an eight. <laughs> sorry about that, Roy. Yeah, blame um, it on blame it on we've Katie. Been chatting in Bla the chat hey, room tonight. Blame it She's on Katie. Me. This is her. This is her uh, uh, session on the show tonight. <laughs> sure, thanks. <laughs> Roy's got the uh, Yesu eight fifty seven, and he says it's going up to a hundred and thirty four foot Hambrew N fed. Wow. And uh, he's also got a uh, Kenwood TR9000, also going to another Hamburg-style J-Pole. 
And then he's got for his handheld, he's got a TYT MD380. Super cool. Thanks for sending that in, Roy. Thanks for being there in the chat room with us. All right. Jerry Simpson is Whiskey Alpha 4 Whiskey Mike Ocean. And he has sent in some pictures of different sh ham shacks currently in use. And so he's got his shack. This is his shack from about 40 years ago to throw some little nostalgia in there. Although he says, you know, he's had newer equipment added to the shack as, as time goes on. and he's But he still likes to use some of these older rigs. Um, so in there, he's got the Heath kit, SV620, and the SV610 monitor scopes. He's got a Drake in there, the SW4. There's an ICOM IC22. Uh, there's a Dentron antenna tuner, and there's even an older military key, along with a Lafayette semi-auto key for CW. Pretty cool. And he says yeah. at the time he had a 60-foot tower and a five-element beam for HF. You see that big Heath kit Apache right there in the picture? Yeah, uh, I had huge. one of those, and I tore it apart. I just tore every single part out of it just to, just to get the case to put my 3813 amplifier in. I wish I'd kept it now. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. But Jerry, and he says that um, the Hammerland in there, you see the HQ 105 TRC was his first true ham rig, which um, his dad, who is now Silent Key, was um, his call. His dad was Norris, Whiskey Bravo for Whiskey Hotel Charlie, and he gave that to him as a gift. So that obviously has special um, attachment to it as well. So that's really neat. Thanks for sending all that um, information, Jerry. It's, it's kind of fun to see some some of these earlier shacks and how they progress over time. So now we're going to move along to Craig Simmons, Whiskey Juliet 6 Alpha in Harvest, Alabama. And he's calling this Space Command. And I can see why. It does kind of look like it, doesn't it? He's running the 7300 as his main radio. He's got a uh, FT891 as his second rig used for portable ops. He's also doing QRP and mobile. He's got the RSP1 SDR receiver. For a 32-inch pan adapter, Ooh. got a seven transmit antennas and three receive antennas, and they're all switchable. Quite the setup there. That is super cool looking. All right, and still move. Got a couple more here, still guys. Thanks for hanging in there. This is great. Wow, we got Paraguay in here tonight with Pino Zolo. He is Zulu Papa for Kilo Fox X-ray, and he's also got the 7300. And, oh, the SPE Expert 1.3 kilowatt amp. Oh, those are nice amplifiers. ooh -wee, lucky you. And uh, let's see. Okay, moving along back to to Ohio with, with Butch Kovacs, Whiskey Delta 8, Echo Ocean Lima. He's got a complete FT-101E setup as well as the FT-2000. And he says all of his antennas are monobanders for 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, and 6 meters. And then he's using dipoles on 40, 80, and 160. Look at that farm he's got going on. That looks pretty sweet. All right, so John is our next. Is this John's photo? That is Alpha. John. Okay. Yep. All right, Alpha Charlie 8 X-ray uniform. He was hoping to make it in here tonight, and you made it, John. So he said he wanted to show that, you know, a lot of people are in the chat room are wondering if anybody has a small or modest station out there. And he said, well, I wanted to show off that I've got one, and I can do a lot with it. He's got the Kenwood TS-140 and the MFJ Deluxe Versa tuner. And, yes, it, that is a Radio Shack H HTX-212. Uh, sorry about that. And he says, in the bottom left corner, you can see a little red light. That's a Raspberry Pi 3 with a USB sound card. And he's using the WSJT soft X software in it. And so he says he's made over 20 FT8 contacts with it. And then the headphone jack on his Kedwood plugs into the mic on the sound card. Then he has his headphones plugged into the audio. And then the mic for the radio sits between the headphones with the box on. And it actually works. And he also has access to the Pi and VPN into it from his main PC. So he's doing a lot of stuff in that little area. So good job on showing off, John, how much you can do in a small space. Super cool. All right. And sorry, I have, I'm trying to figure out, I'm having hearing one of the kitties outside meowing fiercely. I'm, man, yeah. Up, just down, yeah, Downey's out there like, no, let me in. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks everybody. That was a great assortment of photos. And again, if you weren't in tonight's mix, 
don't worry, we will still catch you on the next round. That was a nice, uh, large gathering of shack photos, and it's always fun to see those. And I think we all like to be able to see our shacks on the show, too. It's kind of fun. So thanks, everybody, and keep sending them in, and we will add them to the mix as we go. All right, well, cool. We had a lot of pictures tonight, and there were still a few we didn't get to, but we'll uh, try to get to them in the next uh, show or two. All right. Oh, uh, hey, a cu couple quick and oh, that paper kind of. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah, I gotta quit doing that. I gotta quit doing that. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna go invisible, but I won't do that tonight. <laughs> hey, let me make a couple announcements again. If you're listening on WBCQ Shortwave Station on 5130, we'd love to hear from you. Send an email to Tom at W5KUB.com. Tom at W5KUB.com. We'd love to hear from you. Where you're located, give us a signal report on how you're hearing the uh, International Shortwave Station. Uh, also, if you're new to our group here, uh, join us on Facebook. Up at the top of the menu, there's a place called uh, Facebook. There's a link. Click on that and join our Facebook group. We've got close to about 7,000 people now in our webcast Facebook group, and you can keep up with the show and what's going on. And hey, when some of us get on uh, HF in the afternoons, we'll post the frequency in our Facebook group there, and everybody knows what frequency we're on and when we're on, so we all kind of, you know, uh, get to hang out. Uh, again, we're going to try to start a net up. Uh, maybe by next Tuesday, it'll be prior to the show we'll put that announcement in the facebook group and we will uh, webcast uh, that uh, uh net as it's happening probably from six to seven or something like that central time uh again all prizes are out uh you'll be getting them if you hadn't got it yet uh, all right katie thanks so much for being with us tonight i think you said you had things to go do so we'll excuse you uh, thank you. And I was just going to throw out a couple quick quick things first, if I could, yeah. just to remind everybody, since this is field day month, it's June, and uh, like here in Wyoming, uh, Tom WI7KY reminded me that we just had an announcement that um, our section manager is going to be meeting up with some local hams and our governor to sign a proclamation for Amateur Radio Week, and I'm starting to see announcements about that around there. So most uh, elected officials and it could be local or your all the way up to your governor are more than happy to help with these proclamations and it's a great way to help promote amateur radio so please be sure to do that and also i got a really helpful tip from uh, chip k7ja today he sent me a little message and he said he says might remind everybody don't forget about your 10 meter station be just because there's been low sunspots you know summertime sporadic e has had 10 opening 10 meter openings across North America all this week and he says the 10 meter antennas are pretty small so it really doesn't require a lot of work and um, and if you're using a tri bander then 10 is already there so don't forget about 10 meters in your plans for field day and again thanks to everybody who helped um, Faith Hannah with her her goal and um, they're still working on raising money even though she met her initial goal um, I saw that her dad, James, WX4TV, posted that one of the shots that she needs to get before traveling down to Yoda in South Africa was going to cost $400, one shot. So um, all of the funds that the amateur radio community has done put together is just absolutely amazing. And um, so if anybody out there was thinking, oh, I missed out, you didn't, you can still uh, feel free to help donate into that GoFundMe. And so I think that was all I wanted to say. And thanks yeah. to everybody for all your cheering as as i finished my half marathon this week well, katie so. you know i i was in the air force i know all about those shots uh let me tell you that square needle the one they give you with the square needle that's a tough one so just you know ow try to sink you know psych yourself up for it yeah and anybody's <laughs> been in the military knows knows about the <laughs> shot with the square needle you know what i'm talking about okay oh. all right good night katie right. good night everybody 73 good all right night. guys hey, We'll be right back with you in just a moment here. Let's see. We'll be right, be right back. Chasing the grid. Calling all stations. Make sure you grab your ICOM gear for the most popular on the air event. Field Day, June 23rd and 24th. Let ICOM help you to make the most contacts or practice for emergency situations. The SDR every ham wants the IC7610. 
is here just in time for field day. This high-performance RMDR has the ability to pick out the faintest of signals, even in the presence of stronger adjacent signals. The new ICOM IC7610 is a direct sampling software-defined radio that will be changing the world's definition of an SDR transceiver. It has RF direct sampling, 110 dB RMDR, an independent dual receiver, and dual digit select. Don't forget to bring along the perfect field day companion, the IC7300. It's ideal for the ham on the go. It's a high performance, innovative HF transceiver with a compact design. It too has RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, a large 4.3 inch color touchscreen, real time spectrum scope, and an SD memory card slot. Check out the IC9100. The sky's no limit for this all in one HF, VHF, UHF rig. No matter if you're working DX QSO, RTTY, D Star, Satellite, or even Moon Bounce, ICOM's years of experience is working along with you. The 991 has independent dual receivers, satellite mode, built in antenna tuner, and a digital IF filter. Visit www.icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM radios. Uh, we are back. Uh, okay. Hey, I want to show you this very quickly. You know, we, uh, <clears throat> we tried to implement a remote shack system. And uh, we talked a little about it on the show, and we used it going to Dayton, and uh, it just didn't perform like we hoped it to. And the visibility using the remote shack, the, the thing about the remote shack is it's over the telephone. You don't really have any readout or frequency, and, you know, you're kind of driving in a blind. You have some commands you can do and get some feedback, but it's, uh, it's not really... Uh, 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 doesn't have a lot of good feedback, and, and the phone had audio issues all the time. So we moved to something different. So we tried something different. This is with uh, Ham Radio Deluxe. And I want to show you what we've done here. And we've a little added a little box to uh, our uh, remote shack, which actually, uh, uh, when, when it's not in use, it grounds the antenna, takes the antenna off, grounds the antenna, turns the power off to the power supply. And then when we bring uh, uh, our remote base up, all that stuff turns back on. And it's really slick. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a quick uh, uh, show of that here. And guys, we can't talk over this one. Um, let's see. All right, I found it. Here we go. Okay, guys, I want to show you uh, our new uh, remote base we're working on. Basically, it's using the uh, Ham Radio Deluxe software. What you're looking at here is the remote base uh, at the shack. And it consists of basically a computer running uh, HRD, and of course the remote controlled radio, and there's a power supply. And there's a little antenna switching and power switching box that uh, we built. I'll, I'll go into that later. You notice the radio is off, the power supply is off. Now I'm going to go remotely. I'm going to go over here remotely. Now, let's say I'm in a hotel and this is a completely different computer. So, two things. I'm going to connect right now. I'm going to connect with uh, TeamViewer right here. And when I connect with TeamViewer, they ask me for a password. I'm going to log on. Okay, we're on right now. So back to uh, back to the remote shack. We're back at the shack now. You can see that the, the radio is still off, the power supply is still off. But remotely, all I have to do is click on the uh, Ham Radio Deluxe software right here, and I'm going to do this remotely. I'm going to go to the I'm going to go to the hotel computer, and I'm going to bring the mouse over, and I'm going to click on this. And watch what happens when I open the program. It turns the power supply on and it turns the radio on. Watch this. You might have noticed that the radio came on and the power supply came on. Now, uh, HRD does not do this. This is something that we uh, designed to, uh, to turn it on. I didn't want the antenna connected all the time to the uh, radio because of lightning and storms. No need to have it connected when you're not using it. And there's no need to have your power supply running all the time. 
So HRD does not provide anything to do this with, but uh, I looked at and I broke the serial cable down and you can see the serial cable here. This cable connects the computer uh, uh, to the uh, radio and I was able to take a pin off the serial cable and go into a box. This box actually has a antenna switching relay in it and it also has an AC power relay in it. So when when I start Ham Radio Deluxe it gives me a signal on the RS-232 uh, serial port which turns on my box here it connects the antenna actually it ungrounds the antenna and connects the antenna to the radio it also turns the power supply on so there it is now let me show you what controls we have here there's a million different uh, setups that you can configurations and and looks that you can put on this thing but basically it's really simple look at this over here in the top we've got there's our transmit antenna tuner uh, beat cancel tune vox I mean everything you want to do is right there uh, you got your VFOs remote VFO A and B and so forth you can do split over here we have the the bands and all you gotta do is click on the band. For instance, right now you can see I'm on 7183. I'm gonna click on 20 meters and you'll see the frequency change. So I clicked on 20 meters, we instantly go to 14174. And if you'll notice, the radio's on 14174. So let me click, I'm gonna go over here and click back on uh, 40 and watch the display on the radio. Let me see if I can get both displays in here. Watch the display on the radio. We went back to 7183. Isn't that sharp? Okay. Now look down at the bottom. You've got you've got audio gain. You've got mic gain. You've got RF power, Vox, uh, cure speed, everything here, and it's all can be customized. So here's how you tune it. You got a little slider down here at the bottom. So if you tune the slider. It's going to tune the frequency. Watch the frequency up here. So I'm, I'm tuning. And now I'm going to go back to 7183. So I'm going to go back over to like 7183 by sliding the slider. Oop, went too far. All right, somewhere in there. Now, at the top up here, you have a fine tuning. And you can even have a fine tuning and a finer tuning. But I'm going to just hit the fine tuning here and try to get it down close to 7183. Oh, uh, that's, uh, well, let's see, let me get a little closer. 71, we're getting close, there we go, uh, there we go, 7183, okay. Now, let's go back to the hotel. I'm back at the hotel here. You can see we have the exact same screen. Now, I don't have audio yet because right now I'm using audio through a different system. So I'm going to go down to Skype. I'm going to connect my remote base with Skype. So I'm going to bring Skype up. And I'm going to tell it to connect. And it's connected. And you're hearing audio from the remote base. Let me turn the volume up a little bit. Some really loud signals on a minute ago. I thought it was 30 seconds. Well, for some amateur equipment, long distance. How long have you had that radio before you got the microphone? So you'll notice. He was out of warranty. That's true, it was out of warranty by the time you received it. All right, so you'll notice uh, here's the S meter. Uh, I'm at the remote. I'm at, let's say I'm at the hotel. This is all remote. You notice S meter. It's reading about an S60. If you go over to the radio, it's reading about an S7 there, S8. Okay, so the S meter totally follows it very closely. Uh, the audio is outstanding going through Skype. The rig control. It's still working good though. Wideband had to fix that one though. That had a 
uh, circuit trays carrying up. Audio sounds board. good. Let me turn it down a little bit. Audio sounds good. Now, to transmit, all I've got to do to transmit, and audio sounds great. Boy, look. Here's a cheap $2.00. A cheap two dollar uh, microphone let's say I'm in a hotel okay so I put my microphone right here and all I gotta do to transmit is just put the mouse up here on transmit right there and when I hit transmit when I hit transmit it goes red so I'm in transmit mode right now Hit it again and it takes you out of transmit. But I've made some contacts with this mic and they say the audio sounds beautiful. So this is the hotel in or the remote in. This could be in your truck, your car, your hotel, your vacation home. And then we go back over here. This is the remote base uh, at the uh, at the shack. And uh, the nice thing about this is you've got an antenna up, you know, 60, 70, 80 feet in the air. So uh, it, it's really, uh, it, it really enhances your mobile operations, let's say that. I want to talk to you a little later about this little, uh, this little jet stream uh, uh, power supply I've got here. Uh, this was sent to me from Roger Smallwood at RNL, and this is Jetstream's 30 amp uh, power supply. I want to talk a little more about it later, but it's got binding post on the back, and it's got, um, it's got the uh, other uh, power, what is it? Uh, power pole connectors on the front it reads both current and voltage it's very very quiet and hey look this little knob right here these switching supplies sometimes they can cause some interference on different things this switching knob I mean this knob right here actually changes the frequency of the uh, switching power supply which a lot of times will take that noise out so anyway we'll talk more about that later so anyway I just wanted to show you uh, how we're coming along on uh, remote a remote uh, base and uh, we'll have more about it later all right well I hope that didn't get too boring but anyway uh, we really love that boy I tell you you have complete frequency control you see where you are the audio is great you got all of all the controls for everything boy this is what we needed in the truck when we went to Dayton Wow anyway hey Guys, let's see uh, what we got coming up next, boy. And we'll, we'll keep you posted on that, too. Hey, uh, Emmett, how are you doing tonight? I'm wide awake, thank you, sir. Very good, man. And you're out in Ecom 1. You're getting ready to go where? Well, we're getting ready to go to the Dallas uh, Ham... Not Hamvention. Hamcom, which is in Dallas. It's uh, last couple of years it's been in Las Colinas, and now it's going to be back in Plano again, which... That's going to be kind of exciting. We, we we liked the Plano venue, but we also liked the Las Colinas venue because it was newer and, you know, there was a lot more things around it. But the problem was when you're dealing with a ham activity, uh, the city of Las Colinas seemed to keep scheduling these major events around our, our ham fest. And it would, they would block off the roads and so on. So it made it really difficult for hams to get... Uh, to get to the show and you know what happens when you show up to a ham fest and you can't get there you go to ihop and then you're done so <laughs> now wait a minute if you show up and can't get there uh, well in other words you show up and because the roads are blocked that you can't you, oh, in other words, oh you, you almost can't. show up you don't quite show up there yeah you're almost there so you figure well we'll just go to ihop and then you go to ihop and then you know you get loaded up on carbs you start to feel tired and then you go home so, i tell you you know i, I i've been here before when I was a kid, I, uh, I'm, uh, I went with my dad's softball team up to Missouri. And we got to a little town up there, and we were trying to get to another town, and we stopped for directions. Emmett, they told us we can't get there from here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you. That. I don't know about Missouri, roads up Missouri, but we got to a point you can't get there from here. Yeah, there, All there right. are roads in Missouri that, especially when it's raining, and uh, the weather gets uh, kind of, you know, questionable. Um, you, you, there are times you just can't get to places because the, you know, the roads are flooded. Or heck, even where I live right now, um, I'm on the highland, but down below, down by the lake and down by the uh, stream that we live by, it floods out. So sometimes we'll get stuck here. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, you're coming through okay. Okay, just want to make sure. Yeah, you're not um, good. Yeah, but that was uh, that was always a fun adventure. Missouri is a fun place. It's one of those things that where we live, we've got three rivers, com- you know, literally combining in one place, and so that makes for some interesting weather all year round. Um, you know, it used to be when I lived in Nebraska, I could look at the sky and I could tell you what the weather was going to be for the day. In Missouri, you could look at the sky and that's not, you know, whatever you think is going to be happening isn't what's going to happen. So, you know, I pretty much throw my hands up and said, okay, when it happens, it happens. And, you know, our weathermen get maybe get it about 50% right, you know, 50% of the time. Uh, so it gets to be kind of interesting, too, for planning purposes. So, anyway, yeah. yeah it, it's good to see you again. It was good seeing you out there at Dayton. Uh, you guys were busier than one-armed paper hangers in the paper hanging contest. We I- uh, we were, and uh, man, you know, I, I would love to get around and see all the all the people, especially those that donated prizes, uh, you know, for us. But it's just impossible. There's so much going on. It's impossible to find everybody and get there. Uh, I know we went over to see uh, Bruna there at Begali Keys and. Uh-huh. Uh, and boy, I had to stand in line about 30 minutes to even get up to Bruna. That's a very popular uh, uh, booth out there. Yes, it is. Right next to ICOM and right across from Radio Waves. <laughs> uh, that's true. That's true. That was, uh, that, you know, this year I think was one of the best years that I've ever been at uh, for the Hamvention. You had a good number of people that were there. We had um, a good crowd. ICOM generated a lot of activity in our area with uh, their, the prizes and giveaways and the new radios. And, you know, it was it was a good year because it seemed like everyone was coming out with a new radio. And uh, that was nice. And, you know, the people from Flex were there. They had a nice little booth set up. And uh, anyway, it was a good show. We really enjoyed it. Had a lot, uh, a lot of good questions, a lot of people asking, you know, what's this and what's that about? And, uh, it was fun. It, uh, it it was just one of those kind of shows that it's like, wow, if we could just do this again next year, except for, you know, when it rained that one time. I'm talking about weather again. Rochelle just, just texted me a few seconds ago, told me to quit talking about weather. And uh, I couldn't help it because it's like, you know, we're going, what was it, on Saturday around 3 o'clock, we had that big storm come through and everyone just left. So, you know, it went from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock where things were kind of low. But beyond that, the show was great. A lot yeah. of good people. You know, the facilities were clean. Uh, the food was out of this world. I mean, the, I'm almost thinking that they should have a special competition just for the best food vendor. You know, because, you know, just the quality of the, the you know, and the, the massive selection that you have. That was that was what really made the show for, for us. And no, we didn't get a chance to get out too much either. You, you saw me. I was running between MCOM 1 and the booth and then dealing with some other uh, the event station, which we had set up there, uh, which was fun. They did really good. A lot of contacts were made on the, uh, we were using our Sentinel hex beam with the 40 meter linear loaded element. And, uh, they were running both the ICOM 7610 as well as the, um, uh, the ICOM 7300. And they were running both radios on the one antenna, which that was really a cool demonstration of the, the multiple capabilities of the, the radio waves hex beam. Yeah, and we had hoped to get out there during that, that demo. I think it was one afternoon, but we just didn't make it, man. I mean, we got by and saw the van out there, but didn't get by during your your operation. When I was people through, yeah. <clears throat> we, had, we had a couple of situations where we actually we actually became active and functional for a little bit with uh, Army Mars. They needed to send a couple of messages and do a phone patch and a couple other things. And MCOM-1 is set up as a public service vehicle. It's not necessarily made for just amateur. As a matter of fact, there's maybe one or two amateur radios in here. Just about everything else is land mobile. So we were able to set them up with their communications uh, we did a little. We did a little something with the sheriff's department, which was kind of cool. And next year, we're probably going to be doing some work with the Civil Air Patrol and uh, the, you know the the event itself at uh, at Dayton Hamvention, and then a couple other things. Which you know, this vehicle that's what it's designed for is to be like a like a big switchboard or a uh, you know a way to route radio A to radio B and not have to you know spend a lot of time with um, you know patch cords and so on. It's amazing. Yeah. the things that we can do now. 
Well, Emmett, uh, I know you uh, rushed to get in here just to um, jump in the show here. You're probably busy there. Do you have anything else you want to talk about tonight, or if not? I got, I got a couple of pictures for you. If okay, I can let's, share. See, let's see the pictures there. Am I sharing my screen yet? Um, well, something happened. I don't know. It doesn't look good. Yeah, that's what she said. Oh, just a minute. Okay, let me stop sharing my screen. Okay, what happened? Now you're back oh. now. You're back. But you, okay. you, you had a picture come up, but it was, well, I, it was a still picture. Yeah, let me let me try something here. Share screen. Okay, there we go. There we okay, go. now you get, there we go. Okay, um, one of the things I was going to show you is a picture of our, our hex beam. Now, with the, the hex beam with that 40 meter element, we had a lot of people, you know, asking us, you know, telling us it was a dipole. But this is the uh, this is the event station right here. This was uh, uh, the Dayton Hamvention uh, antenna that we used. And what you'll see here, and you've seen it many times, mm -hmm. this is a linear loaded element that gives us 40 meters without having to do a you know take up all the space. And what we've done is you have a driver and a reflector. In other words, you have the radiating element and you have a reflecting element. And what that does is it allows, you know, to have give you at least 15 dB front to back and pretty much the gain of a dipole. But the, the, the trick is, is that front to back because mm -hmm. now you're able to block everything out from behind you and point it forward. Um, that was an interesting uh, situation because we had several people t tell us, well, yeah, it's a dipole. No, it's a, it's an actual, uh, you know, two element Yagi that's been shortened. Um, our comp one of our competitors does make one. It's a, but, but they're using the dipole, and uh, we're about the only ones that do, that do this as as far as a commercial product is concerned. And then I've got one, a couple more pictures I'd like to show you if you if you let me. Sure. Um, you can see my. I had all these pictures stacked up and they all disappeared on me. I don't know what happened to them. Um, so forgive me if I'm searching just a little bit. It's okay. Anyway, there, there you go. This is uh, this was the uh, at the venue where we had everything nested down. We had the MCOM one uh, hex beam set up. We were this was just before. This is just after the storm, so we had everything down. We and you can see the hex beam right there in the back. That's the event station. Mm -hmm. We've got our NVIS loop antenna, which attracted, you know, created a lot of attention, had a lot of attention, uh, mainly from people who do Mars and NVIS type communications. The other thing we had is we had this really nice GAP GP3 antenna up on top that allowed us to do our UHF VHF. And uh, it was really nice the people from GAP to, to give us, let us use one of those. Uh, it made for a nice, uh, I already showed you that one. Uh, there's a cat photo. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry, um, I'm just popping through these real quick. Let's see if I can find. You've already saw. It. Here's the front shot of it. Um, we've got the MCOM one. Uh, you got the the. Uh, this is a this is an antenna that we designed just for land mobile. So we, what what this does is allow. It's been designed mainly for the commercial ALE type operations. So each one of these elements are tuned to a specific channel on ALE. That was one of the reasons why we were able to work so well with the Mars people because their stuff is all on shares. And also we carry with us a lot of times on a lot of events, we'll carry um, with MCOM-1, we have the 20 kilowatt generator that we bring along with us. And the van doesn't need 20 kilowatts of power, but quite often in an incident with, you know, the, the, the place will need some power and, and having that along is a good asset to have. And it runs on, it runs on diesel and it'll run for almost a, you know, two or three days without having to uh, put, you know, put a lot of, you know, uh, refill the gas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Trying to find a good pic, another little picture that we had. Now, I'm really sorry. I had these all stacked up nice and neat. And next thing you know, oh, who's this? <laughs> oh, There's yeah. Dwayne. Yeah, there's Dwayne and there's uh, Rhea. Rhea. Yeah. She's uh, she was there, which was really kind of neat. Uh, I was glad she showed up. Uh, she's always entertaining and always fun and very knowledgeable. One of the more, she's one of those ones that I can talk to, and she gave me a straight, uh, you know, a straight answer. You know, she won't candy coat it, but she won't be abrasive either, which was kind of nice. And then uh, there's Kevin working, you know, working with a customer. Um, I've got one more for you. I just got to remember where it's at. Da, 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 da. 
So, oh, who's that guy? Anyway, um, give me a second here. Okay, no problem. Pull up all my old pictures here. This was, oh, darn it. Jeez, <laughs> oh, sorry about that. I keep forgetting when I when I look when I bring the pictures up in the raw it it, uh, it automatically goes to well this was the event station we had the ICOM seventy six ten and we had an ICOM seventy three hundred running they were both running at the same time uh, you know on the same antenna which is a really neat thing about our, our hex beam plus on the forty meter element that that linear loaded forty meter element gives them the ability to also with an autocoupler uh, work thirty meters. And that was that was really cool. I'm trying to find that picture. Darn it! Get to see all my astral photography. I can't find it. But uh, those are the big things that I had going on. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. And go back to where you guys can see my lovely face. There we go. Uh, and this weekend we're going to be we'll be setting up outside of the Plano building. Uh, MCOM one will be there. Uh, we'll have it set up as an event station. We'll have the hex, hex beam and some other things set up. We'll also be doing some uh, uh, demonstrations and walkthroughs with uh, emergency operations type people to give people an idea of, of what can be done with the, you know, you don't have to have a big budget, but it can be done and it's, and it's flexible and um, you can change things out fairly quick. And that's kind of what makes MCOM 1 such a, so, such a unique platform to work from and i hope to see a lot of people there i know i know tom you're not going to be there but i am going to definitely get to see you and we'll get to spend some time with you in dayton i mean in uh Huntsville. in Huntsville. yeah yeah and uh, yeah, let me go ahead i'm gonna pull that one up real quick uh by the way the hamcom just to let you know it's the 40th anniversary this year it'll be june 8th through the 10th so this year it's a three-day event it's at the plano event center plano texas and it's Friday from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock, Saturday 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Sunday 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, it's, a good, it's a good show. I'm, I'm excited to see what the venue, you know, how the venue works out, um, especially going back to the old, the old location. And one of the things that most people didn't know, one of the reasons why it moved to Las Colinas was for some reason... Uh, the venue accidentally scheduled a rodeo on the same day that the uh, ham, you know, the 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 ham fest was going to be, and so then they had to scramble and find a new location, and then they found the 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 uh, the Las Colinas location, and it uh, you know it, it seemed to work out, except for they had a marathon that day, you know, right when the show's opening, they have a marathon and they block off all the roads, and that kind of messed things up pretty pretty bad, and then. Then after that, they started adding things to the uh, to the venue as far as you know more buildings and so on, and parking became more and more of a problem. So, anyway, I'm kind of excited about Plano, and uh, I'm excited to see all the the, the people that we're going to see. Some of our friends are going to be there, and uh, uh, it's kind of funny because we're going to be going down to Dallas for the show. And then we're coming back to St. Louis, and then we're going to go back down to Texas again for Field Day, which we're looking forward to. Uh, we're not doing it as a, as a real big contest or anything. We're just going to do it to have some fun and uh, spend some time with my good friends, Ray Novak and a couple other people, which that's going to be kind of fun. Cool. And, you know, uh, we were talking a minute ago about Last Man Standing coming back, and I think you're helping yeah. them with some equipment, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Uh, most people, some people really didn't know it, but we had uh, the, uh, their base station or the station, the club station itself, was using one of our antennas on top of you know the, the Studio City uh, uh, set, and uh, what we're in the process of doing is getting that squared away again, uh, so that way they can pretty much set set up and you know do a last man standing net and so on. So I'm really excited about uh, you know the program the the, the show coming back, uh, and that uh, you know that they're going to be it's going to be amateur radio centric as well. So we're going to get to see, you know, uh, Mr. Baxter playing with uh, the ham radios again. Yeah. And, um, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward well, I think, to it. I think you've been out there and, and, and uh, helped out with a lot of the equipment. I know uh, 
Uh, John uh, brought us out there a couple years ago, and it was a great trip for us. Uh, I, I have a picture. I have a picture of Mandy here with me somewhere, but I can't find my Mandy picture. But uh, Tim had just got his license, and he didn't want anybody to know it. And I, I got a chance to talk with Tim Allen after after one of the practices out in the alley, and says, "Tim, uh, can I announce that on our webcast we're doing from here?" And he goes, "You know, how he does it." Uh, you know, that grunt, and you know, he really didn't yep. want it out. And I said, Man, it's kind of public knowledge. He says, Oh, I didn't know that. He says, uh, Go ahead. So, so anyway, we uh, we we got to break the news from out there on one of our webcasts that he got his license. Now, I don't know how active he is, but I know the club out there has really got a lot of new people out there, uh, uh got their ham licenses, and the stations out there are uh. Uh, functioning stations. I know ICOM had, you know, had loaned them equipment, you the antennas, and uh, various other pieces, Comet, and so forth, and and uh, it was a working station. A lot of people don't realize that. Yeah. What was really interesting is those right after the show, they would generally get on the air. They'd yeah. have a net, and, um, that, and it was generally operated by, you know, visitors, you know, visiting hams, and it was interesting how every show there was some visiting hams, and so it was, it was neat to see the community come together for something like this. And uh, I'm trying to keep that light from glaring yeah. on you. Um, it's, it's, it's neat. And so, yeah. it, you know, anything we can do to help, we're there for them. Well, I, I had one other picture when I was out in L.A. Uh, let's see if I can find Oh, no, nope, that, that's not it. Yeah. That's, that's not it right there. Uh, <laughs> anyway, okay. Hey, Emmett, thanks so much, man, for joining us tonight. Uh, i got a couple of announcements to make. Hey, stick around for a minute or two if you want to and, and chime in. Sure. But, hey, uh, June the 16th is... June the sixteenth is Kids Day, some some kind of amateur radio kids day, I think. Uh, it's ARL Kids Day. That's what it is. So, yeah, uh, yeah from eighteen hundred UTC to twenty three fifty nine on uh, June sixteenth. All right, well, and uh, maybe we'll get a chance to work some of them there. Also, hey, I want to give a shout out to, and we're going to have uh, Huntsville people on here. My friend uh, Mark uh, N four BCD. Uh, I have him on here soon. But uh, well, binary I talk coded decimal. Well, what was that? BCD binary coded decimal. That's how I always remember his call sign. Right. A B. The way I remember it is A then B C D. You know. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hey. Hey. But anyway. Hey. Uh, man, I tell you something. And, and I told Mark this. I told Art down there. I think Art's the inside exhibit chairman. Uh, Mark is the. Uh, chairman i think this year of the ham ham fest but anyway um it, it's the friendliest ham fest in the country and you know kathy goes to a few with us uh but this is a special ham fest for her she loves it it's just really nice down here totally clean totally climate controlled you don't have to get out of the hotel i mean you you can walk from the hotel to the ham vention in the same building without getting outside Oh man, it is so nice. And uh, what can I say, man? Do you, do you like? How, how does this one compare? You like it? Well, I really like the. I've always liked the the the, the uh, Huntsville Ham Fest because one, we get to meet with people who are. Uh, forgive me. I've got everything from you know uh, hillbilly rocket scientists to PhDs to um, you know just you know Joe off the street, and yeah. it is neat. And but it, what's what's really neat is to see those people from those different stratas all having one thing in common, and that's ham radio. And it it's exciting. I love it. It brings a lot of people together. Yeah, it does. And I do like the venue. Um, it's always been clean. I like the idea of being able to go to Starbucks and get some coffee if I need it. Uh, typically, though, we brought our own. But still, it's nice having those facilities there. Um, the Von Braun Center is a really nice place to be, so I like it. Well, and you know, um, they might treat you as good as they do me, but man, there are donuts there and drinks oh, yeah. and uh, honey baked ham. Boy, I'm so mm -hmm. hungry right now for that honey baked ham. I can't Stop wait. It. Stop it. I got to go now. <laughs> yeah, I know it. I know, man. Oh, Until man. next week. I know. All right. Okay. Well, I tell you what, it's we're going to. We're going to close down the formal part of the show tonight. I'm going to bring Hangout up and see if anybody wants to join us on Hangout. I'm going to stick around a few minutes. Thanks so much for being with us. 
You bet. Thanks a lot. We'll be uh, we'll have some a report for you when it's all over with. I mean, when it's all when, when we get back from Dallas. And okay. Then we got uh, field day. I'll get you some field day pictures. Uh, we are planning on having some young ones on, so we'll see how that works out too. So, have a good one, everybody. Seven three. This is W zero QH Radio Waves. All right. We'll see you. Bye. All right. Well, I I think that was pretty good. Let's see if I can uh, bring our hangout up here. Let's see what's going on in hangout tonight. Got to click on a few buttons here. <sighs> and hang out, hang out right there. You know, I didn't even put the link in for hangout. Let's see if somebody can put the link in for hangout. I'll try to. If you click on this link in the chat room, that will take you to hangout. That way you can join us. I'm surprised some of the uh, regulars aren't aren't already in there. Well, see, Jill's going to uh, looks. I think she's talking about Huntsville. Yeah, I tell you guys, you won't be disappointed if you uh, if you go to Huntsville. Well, let's see what we've got here. We've got we've got feedback feedback coming from. I don't know. Gregory, is it you? Maybe I see. Not, not Gregory. Okay, his mic is muted. Hello. Okay, his, his mic is muted. I'm gonna have to use my phone for hangout. I bet you, I bet you, it was a troublemaker, Douglas. That's who it was. That's who it was. All right. Well, hey, we got Roy in here tonight. We got Douglas in here tonight. We've got me in here, and we've got. Hey, we got Gregory in here tonight. Hey, Gregory, how you doing, man? I didn't hear you. Oh. Yeah. my internet on the right now. I'm hearing all kinds of tones. I don't know if that's some kind of digital something going on or just feedback or what it is. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely some digital stuff running in the background. So uh, you must have some digital running there, or maybe we got that piped into the audio somehow. Hey, can you hear me now? I can hear you, but we've got uh, some digital stuff going on pretty loud. Not hearing the digital stuff. Are you running any digital right now? No. Nope. When you mute your mic, it goes away. It's really loud. Oh, it's back on again. All right, somebody in the chat room. Okay, JT65. Let's see. Somebody said J. Somebody said JY63. I never heard of that. Uh, Maybe there is. JT65. Wait, somebody's saying that's FT8, so I don't know what it is, but uh, it looks like it's coming from you, Gregory, because when you mute your mic, it goes away. Here, let me mute mine and see if it Yeah, mute it because I hear it now. Okay, yeah, when you mute it, it goes away. So it's like, you, have you got a receiver on? Have you got a receiver turned on and that audio may be into the mixer? Let's right. see if that cured it. Yeah, that's what it was. It was, it was your okay, receiver, receiver was. audio. Boy, that was some strong signals, man. A lot going on there. All right, I forget, Gray, where, where, where are you located? In North Charleston, South Carolina. Okay. Yeah. I think you joined us in a hangout last week, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, okay, yes, cool. Yes, I did. Cool. And, and what was your call again? KG4GEK. GEK, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, All right. I'm, I'm trying to remember everybody. All right, cool. Well, I think the show went okay tonight. We had uh, some, a couple different different topics to talk about. I uh, hadn't figured out what we're going to do next week yet, but 
something always comes around by about the weekend. So if anybody out there has any ideas or would like to be on the show, uh, give me a call or send me a, a message. Uh, you know, join our chat room or join our uh, Facebook at W5KUB Facebook group and you can get in touch with me there. All right. Well, we had a good turnout tonight, I think, uh, in, uh, in viewers. They're pretty good. So, Douglas, what are you working on this week? You're always working on something, man. Uh-oh. I hear, I hear birds, and there's, there's, there's birds there's back here. There, there, he's got birds, man. It's like, must like, like springtime there, man. Springtime in Montana. Yeah. You, are, are you outside or are you in the garage? No, I'm outside. I thought so. I saw the back there open. I, I thought, you know, usually you're, uh, you're in the, uh, the garage with the, the heater trying to stay warm. <laughs> <laughs> Not right now. It's all outside now. Yeah, cool. How's it going, Tom? Yeah, we're going pretty good. Going pretty good. Man, I've got a lot of projects that I got involved in this week. Uh, uh, hey, Kathy bought me a, a 7610 radio. I, I I didn't need it. I just got me a 7300, but she wanted to get me one. So uh, you can't argue with your wife when she wants to buy you some ham gear. Oh, absolutely yeah. not. <laughs> and then I've, I, you know, and then I've, I I started working on it. And I put this remote base thing together, and it's working really well. Well, I wish we had it. when We went to Dayton. I mean, I can see the frequency and everything with this. Uh, so that, that's working really well. Um, let's see what else is going on. Uh, two or three things. Uh, I'm putting my azimuth elevation satellite antennas back up. I, I'm going to be working out in the shop uh, this week and welding a, a, a base for the antennas, and I'll, I'll get that up on the roof. And I've got some coax coming in from Italy, that messy, uh, messy cable. That really nice. good. Uh, they're they're super flex, uh, low loss, highly low loss, whatever. So they're sending me some in uh, uh, from uh, from Italy. So as soon as that gets here, I'll, I'll get my satellite stuff going. And something else I'm working on. I don't know what it was. Yeah, yeah. I got all kinds of stuff going right now. Oh, I need to. I really want to get into some of the digital stuff. Walker is trying to do digital, and he's having a little. Uh, problem that's a little overwhelming, so I, I'd like to get into some digital stuff, and maybe uh, he and I can learn together and get me a digital station on here. So that's what coming. I'll be doing with that's the coming. Computer next week is putting in some 200 CFM fans. Now, what, what's that? What was it? I'll be putting in 200 CFM fans on my computer. Uh, I, I guess is that a lot of air? Yeah, 200 cubic feet per minute yeah well do you need that yeah it blows out pretty hot yeah well yeah that is a lot of air yeah that would uh that, kind yeah. of, that reminds me of maybe yeah, that much air, you might be having a, a competition when you get on the radio yeah, boy, I tell you, fan noise is, is is a bummer too. A lot of times, I've got some equipment that the fans just aren't quite enough in, and I've got a little switching supply. I mean, I've got a reg, I got some regular uh, twelve volt supplies here, but I've, I've got a couple of switching supplies, and well, I've got one. It just when it turns on, it just that fan makes so much noise. The one I showed tonight in the video is really really quiet. That new little jet stream. It's real quiet. What I'm using with my hands is I'm going to be using those rubber feet that go into place of the screws for mounting the fan. Yeah, I don't know that it's that much vibration. It's just more of the air flow. The air it's, movement, yeah, the air the movement. Air, it makes all the noise, man. Yeah. But anyway, cool. Let's see who else. Uh, let's, see, let's see, William's there, Gregory, Mark. Mark joined us. I just wonder what happened to old uh, Jeffrey tonight, man. You, Jeffrey's usually in here. I guess he probably went to bed early. Yeah, he said he had to go early, so uh, okay. he sent me a private message. Okay. He, said, cool. he says you still have to uh, auto-op him in the uh, chat room. Uh, 
Yeah, well, I need to register him, I guess. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even think about auto hopping or anything like that. But yeah, I don't mind doing that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, uh, Doug there says his friend sent his 7610 back. I wonder what was wrong with it. I had my second lunch tonight, the second half of it. It was so much for lunch, I brought it home. Mark, let's see, we got Mark in here. Let me see, Mark, Mark, Mark. Let's see what Mark that is. Well, I know what Mark that is. That's, that's you, Mark. I'm looking for Mark P. Uh, he used to get in here sometimes with us. Uh, Mark P is a relatively new ham. Uh, K E eight H I W. We he just bought a he he got his uh, uh, general license or his first license just a couple months ago and for up at Dayton we took him a radio up there for him to get on the air and I built him an antenna and I haven't heard from him since then so I don't know if he's making any contacts or not. Uh, Mark, uh, if you're in the chat room, tell us are you making any contacts? And let's see. Just kind of scrolling through the contacts here to see who who was out there that I might recognize. Uh, I see most. I know most of the people out there. Hey Tom, I have a question for you. When you run your video and you're doing that drive up from your home up the. Yeah. Dayton? Yeah. yeah. What do you do? You feed the video to the computer and leave it record on the computer? Well, it's live. We we right. we, we use the same sh same program, or or I do have a different program, but we use a, we use a streaming program, and we connect through uh, through internet or while we're driving uh, back to our our channel and we stream live. Right, and then you leave it uh, record in the server. Huh? Well, uh, we use YouTube for our streaming, uh, right? And, and YouTube records everything. So once we once we stop, uh, it's automatically recorded and it's automatically on the channel. Right, and then if you want to trim it or whatever, you can trim it and then publish it or yeah. You can what, have I, what I what I typically what I typically do for the show uh, Tuesday nights, you know, we play music for about we play music for thirty minutes before the show and. I'll uh, I'll go back after the show tonight, and I'll uh, I'll trim off that first thirty minutes of music where the show just starts, you know, right, and and clean it up just a little bit, and, and I'll name it and I'll put some you know words and stuff in there. Yeah, I saw uh, I saw one YouTube video about the 7610. A guy in Australia had a problem and that was with a power knob, and uh, he would turn the power, uh, adjust the power on there. It, it it didn't it didn't work right with the output power of the radio. So uh, I don't know, but uh, you know. What little bit I played with this one, I, I, I enjoy it. I can't say that it's a whole lot more radio than the 7300, except it's two. It looks like two 7300s in one case is what it looks like. Well, we're looking real forward to. Um, to uh, Huntsville coming up in about two and a half months, and uh, you know at Dayton this year uh, w we uh, we kind of redesigned our space, and uh, I really like the way it looked uh, this year, our booth up there. So we're going to try to do something very similar in Huntsville uh, this year. We're having uh, some curtains put up, and uh, uh, you know the, the the rails on each side, and. Uh, well, it'll have a lot of color in there. We'll have our banners and stuff. So it, it should look a lot better this year. We're kind of trying to make it look a little bit more formal. And, uh, boy, I can't wait. 
We, we like Huntsville so much, we go a day early and stay a day later. And uh, heck, tonight, I mean, I'm just thinking maybe we ought to go two days early this time. I almost thought that the uh, convention or whoever puts it on set the curtains up. You know, I think Dayton, doesn't they set the curtains yeah, up? Yeah, well, that the space... Your... Yeah, the space that we, we always had was a really special place. It was up against the wall, uh, next, actually next to the stage. And, uh, w yeah, out in the, for where the vendors are and the commercial dealers, the commercial dealers for, uh, have, have curtains and the, the short walls. The, uh, the uh, you know, the flea market people, of course, they don't have curtains and stuff, but we were right next to the stage, and we on that wall, we never really uh, thought about having the curtains there, but since we're going to, uh, now a more professional, clean, uh, you know, good look, uh, we're going we're gonna to get those curtains put up and stuff, and uh, I, think, uh, I think we'll have a really, really great booth there this year. Yeah, no, I'd like to go down to the hunt, so, but I don't think it'll be this year. I'm going to run out the East Coast, all. Yeah, okay, uh, let's see. Bill is saying, Tom, make a trip to Mendelssohn's Warehouse on Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Bill, uh, K-A-2-O-F-M, Mendelssohn's. Is there a Mendelssohn's in Huntsville? I, I didn't know that. There's a Mendelssohn's we used to go to all the time up in uh, Dayton, but is there also a Mendelssohn's in, in, in uh, Huntsville? That one of the things I do want to still get to is Mendelssohn's down in Dayton. Yeah, you ought to try to make it one time. We've, we've made it for, I think, 38 straight years. At some point, we're going to miss it. Something's going to happen. Every year, I, you know, I'm, I think somebody's going to be sick or something's going to happen. And, but, but so far, we've, we've made it each year. So our, our next ham fest is going to be Huntsville. And then we've got, we're going to go down to Orlando in February to the Orlando Ham Fest and see that. And then we're going to, uh, I think from there, just so we won't make it a ham radio only trip, we're going to catch a, a cruise ship and maybe take a seven day cruise out of there, kind of put those back to back. Okay, Bill was talking about Dayton. Yeah. Man, I tell you, Mendelssohn's in Dayton, uh, you know, they used to outside have, massive tent and they would bring yeah, so they, much they said it didn't, wouldn't work out for them or they couldn't get it or something yeah they would they would bring so much stuff man uh you know and this year they moved them inside and they only had like three spaces there's three or four spaces but uh when we were in dayton we used to go downtown to mendelson's warehouse and it's like five or six floors and it's it got the old old timey elevator in it you know the, the little door you close the little door and you got the little drive. I think you got the little man here drives you up and to the next floor. And uh, boy, we walked around in there uh, one day, and anything you want, surplus Mendelssohn had bought it. My only complaint, I got a couple complaints about Mendelssohn's though. Uh, they uh, 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 used to bring bolts and nuts, and I, I'd always buy about five pounds of screws and bolts, but they would never have any nuts to fit the bolts. And I'd always come home with five pounds of bolts and screws with, with nothing that would fit on the end of them there. And then I bought some uh, commercial 220 radios. They were brand new one year. I think they were 75 bucks a piece, but they were 220 radios. And we thought we could modify them and get them on a ham band, but it had some type proprietary uh, software in it and we never were able to to break those things so I, I ended up taking those back and I sold them to somebody that wanted to give it a try so anyway hey Mendelssohn's is a cool place I, I'd love to go back and just walk around in your their warehouse that's yes, I do want to do I'm down there now now it's a little further away because we don't go there you know matter of fact I only went through Dayton or Cincinnati one time this year, and that when I went to RNL, I got flyers off for our ham fest. Yeah. Now I went up Route 4 up to 
I think it's 63, just be, well, right between Cincinnati and Dayton, went across after Americana, stopped there. Used to be an amusement park, it closed up in, I think, 2001 or 2002. I went there the last year, and then that was it. A small park. All right, well, guys, this is... It's, yeah, we keep losing these uh, big buildings like malls. They're just closing up. Everything's just closing up anymore. Yeah. Commercial strip centers are closing up. You know, when you go into some of these things, you look and say, you know, this used to be a thriving uh, shopping center. You know, there was a lot of people well, in them there's a, buying. There's a lot like that down in the Memphis area too. That well, yeah. I thought when I was all over the country, I think when I was young, they were really, really nice malls. I mean, I'm talking about mega malls, big man, and, and some of them actually have been bulldozed down now to just grass, you know. So, wow, it's, it's amazing how things like that change. All right, guys, I'm getting out of here. It's getting a little late, and uh, I've got I'll go edit the program tonight, get the music off of it, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks to everybody that tuned in. Uh, we really appreciate it. Join our Facebook. Facebook group at the top there. Uh, click on Facebook and join us. Uh, send us a signal report if you uh, heard us on uh, uh, WBCQ shortwave station. And um, we'll see you next week. Same three there, buddy. All right. All right. Well, guys, uh, had a good time. I'll say hi to Kurt. Oop, I guess what's going on here. Yeah, I'll say hi to Kurt up there in New Jersey. Kurt, I think I saw you come by in Dayton, come by and waved at us. We were so busy, I can't remember who came by, really. Uh, let's see who we got here. We got Kurt. We got KD1XY. Thanks a lot, man. We got Doug out there. We got Renee. Trying to see if there's any. Andy, Andy, I think, is over in the UK. Andy 2E0REE. -E. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident Andy won a prize. I don't remember what it was, but uh, I, I recognize uh, him. Um, see, we got Russ there, the Linux guy, K5TUX. There's Bill, Blair, John, Mark, Brian. Andy, Greg, Clay, Doug, Ron, Robbie. Boy, we got a bunch of people. There's my there's my friend Craig from over in uh, Eastern Tennessee, KM4YEC. Oh, uh, let's see. There's Mickey up there, uh, NY2MC. I think Mickey. I may be wrong. I think Mickey won the. Uh, I'm not mistaken. I think Mickey might have won the Comet Antenna Analyzer last year. Everything runs together, man. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, good night to everybody. We enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next week. So you're saying I connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. All right. Hey, remember, watch Facebook. Hopefully we'll have Annette running next week. Same as Reese. We'll see you.